Hosea chapter number 3. Then said the Lord unto me, Hosea, Go, yet love a woman beloved of her friend, yet an adulteress. Of that one. He told Hosea, go get a whore and marry her. Now he says, go love a woman that's an adulteress. According to the love of the Lord toward the children of Israel. Again, another illustration to the children of Israel. Hosea's got to be an outcast. He's went upon a whore. And now he's going to take a woman in adultery. They brought a woman that, that committed adultery to Jesus and they wanted to see what Jesus would do. But the problem is when you read Isaiah, Jeremiah, and Ezekiel, adultery and whoredoms was just normalness. They even had sodomites in their little uh, prayer quilts by the temple, the Bible records. And what God's telling Hosea here is, I want you to give an illustration. What you're going to do is what Israel's doing to me. They are whoredom and they are adulteresses. Who look to other gods. All right, let's stop right there. Adultery is a great sin. It's a sin in the Old Testament that had no offering. A person that committed adultery in the Old Testament outside the sure mercies of David died and went to hell. We are commanded in the church age as born-again Bible-believing Christians to flee fornication, to escape adultery. It is a wicked sin that a, a husband and wife violation by another outsider into the marriage bed. And when you read, I believe it's Hebrews 13, it says uh, about the marriage bed, uh, whoremongers, God will judge. Adulterers, I believe God will judge. Adultery you find in the Old Testament in Paul's writing is a flesh sin abomination. And this is exactly what Israel is doing to God. Thou shalt not commit an adultery. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife. But we're not talking about a husband and wife relationship here. We're talking about a group of people who turned from God to serve God. Now we just passed Sunday... And how many churches had either the night off, got themselves a television, rented a television, had a powwow over a pig skin called the Super Bowl? Now, if you interrupted your normal services for a worldly sporty event, you have committed adultery against God. You have said, God, here, we'll put you on the shelf. We're going to put the football, more important. We're going to give up on you, God, tonight so we can watch a bunch of idiots fight over a little ball where you can just buy a ball for the whole team. When you say, okay, we're not going to do it God's way. We're going to do it our way. You have committed adultery against God and his word. See, there is adultery and fornication that does not involve sex. Though an abominational, an abominable uh, sin, but there's also adultery and, and whoredom when you turn from the God that died for you upon Calvary's cross and you turn to other gods. And those other gods can be family, friends, career, you name it. And when you put something above God, you are an adulterer. And I don't care if you've been faithful to your wife. I don't care if your wife has been faithful to you and vice versa for the husband. If you had put God off for something else, you have committed adultery. Plain and simple. 
Now the Bible says that, that there's God, there's the Lord Jesus Christ, there's the husband, there's the wife, there's the children, and there's the career. You can commit adultery against your husband by not obeying his authority and doing your own thing and putting other things above your husband or above God, children, or uh, career. That's not giving the honor to the husband that is due to him by the Bible. This is not giving honor to God by what God told the Jews to do. Realize adultery is just not a sexual sin. It's not putting the authority where it belongs. And you will be charged at the judgment seat of Christ. Mean, nasty. Oh, don't, oh he slept, ran off with a pillow player. He slept with. Oh, no, no. Yeah, what about your reaction and your actions to God and the family foundation that God has set to you by Paul? And I'm not one of those, you know, whatever Paul says. Listen, I'm the whole Bible, 66 books. But those church epistles are written to us. And what Hosea is doing here, God's telling us, listen, this is what you're going to do because this is what Israel has done to me. So I bought her to me for 15 pieces of silver. We read in the last chapter, she was taking everything that God gave her. And giving credit to Baal. Now Hosea steps out and says he buys a woman. And for a homer of barley that God gave. God gives the silver. The silver comes from the ground that God created when he made the earth, when he made the dry land. Barley is a plant that God made, created. And a half a homer of barley. So he gets a homer and a half of barley for this woman and silver. He pays for her. She's become a whore. She's a bought woman. You say, well, how wicked is that? How wicked is Israel? And you, you read even further and further that Israel is a reverse poor. She pays the nation. What were they doing with the temple of God? They would go up to the temple and scrape the gold off the door and pay it to the... And that's Judah. You're looking at a vile sin that resulted in their conduct and honor to God that God is going to remove them by the Assyrians into captivity. And not long after that, Judah will be removed by Babylon, taken in captivity for the very same sins that we've already studied. Go back and get the videos or the audios through Isaiah, through Jeremiah, through Ezekiel. And that this sin is being committed by Christians today. There are other things that honor and it's not giving honor to God. Many Christians are going to be shocked at the charges that are going to be laid to them at the judgment seat of Christ. When you talk about adultery, some don't even, even look upon a woman. The lust out there in his heart, heart has already committed adultery with her. So you only have to think about committing spiritual adultery against God. You got to only think about, hey, you know, this is, oh, no, you know, I'm going to serve God and do right. You're thinking about it. This branches out as a nation. This branches out as a family. This branches out as a church. There are churches out there today that would give three times a week service to God and they quit it. God not important? There are churches out there, we'll, you know, we'll have church service and, that, and then we'll have a movie night. We'll go see a worldly movie. What, you just put God away? You, you don't think God goes in with you? Where do you leave God? In the van?
these past halftime shows that you've seen at the there's no church member should be seeing that stuff. And then the church got all upset. I think I don't know how many years ago, you know, uh, uh, the breast of one woman was seen. Why did the churches get upset? How did you know about that? Why were you watching that? Why did you give up a church night for that junk? And then you turn around and complain. You stay true to the Lord, you wouldn't have no idea what had happened, what's going on. You would probably learn more from the Bible. You would probably learn more about God. So he buys this woman. And I don't, I've had a partial list and I'm going through my Bible to be reading. I wonder what the 15 pieces of silver would equal to other places in the Bible. This is half the price of what Judas paid for Jesus. I wonder what a homer and a half of barley would have cost. When the, I want to, I just wanted just by chance. I don't know if that would be another fifteen pieces of silver. I don't know. I'm just taking a guess there. And I said unto her, uh, "He's dictating to the prostitute." Thou shalt abide for me many days. Thou shalt not play the harlot. Thou shalt not be for another man. So will I also be for thee. 1 Corinthians 7, 3-5 What Hosea tells this woman is, You better be faithful to me, and I'm going to return you to faithfulness. I'm going to love, honor, and obey you. You better love, honor, and obey me. Through sickness, through health, through whatever. That's what he's saying. And that's what he expects from her. And that, and listen, not only that, that's what he turns to her and says, I'm going to do the same thing. And it's, he's talking to a woman who has already committed vile acts. He's talking to a woman that has already sinned. Now, where do you think his faith lies? Do you think his faith lies in, in this woman? Or do you think his faith lies in God? I wouldn't even touch a woman like this. As jealousy that I, I have had and have, I wouldn't even bother. Be wondering... But look what God has to say. This is God speaking for the children of Israel. Now, two and three happen after what we're learning in chapter three. God explained it to him what the reason, the illustration, and in the middle of three and four, he's like, I went out and did it. And this is what God tells me why. For the children of Israel shall abide many days. Without a king. My note. They're self-governed. And without a prince. Without a sacrifice. There is no worship of God. And without an image. I'm trying to find that note. They were not to have an image. The image would be the image of God through the high priest, through the priest, through the sacrifices, through the uh, the, the I'm trying to think of the offerings, through the the feast. All those were supposed to point them to God and the Messiah. The Lord Jesus Christ fits all the service of the priest. All the the sacrifices fit through the Lord Jesus Christ. All the assemblies, all the feasts, all that God told them to do shows the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. They ain't got that. And without an ephah, the high priest, 
without paraffin. That's a household image. So the nation of Israel, with the service that they're doing, had their own images and had their own standing image, their household images. Remember, Israel did very few came down to Judah, to the temple. They had their own form of worship. Jeroboam had his own little Roman Catholic church set up. When you go back and study, he had his own priest. He, he paid his own priest. He set up his own priest. And they worshiped his gods, the golden calves. Remember them? So what would these images and teraphims be? Bah, moo. I've got a computer that has, that has a symbol of a cow. For a while there, and probably made a stew pop today, there was all kinds of kitchen gadgets and all that, you know, the, the towels, the bowls, and all that, with cow patterns. There's even a chicken place with a cow as an icon. And, you know, expressions like, holy cow. This woman that is spoken of by Hosea that he is paid for, he tells her, listen, you're not going to play the harlot. You're not going to have another man. This is what's being told to Israel that, hey, and it's happening in 2016. There is no king today in Israel. I believe he's a prime minister and he can't do nothing. He has no power or authority to do anything. He's a puppet government. The Roman Catholics run the area over there. You go over there. Oh, we're going to go over to Holy If I take my family over to Holy Land, okay? Hey, let, 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 let's go around. Let's go see some of the relics. Let's go see all this stuff. You know who's going to take you on those relics and the, all those stuff? The Roman Catholic. And if you tell, okay, if this is the spot, whatever it is, are you telling me, sir, if you're Jewish, whatever, if you're Roman, are you tell me at this specific spot is the exact spot that happened in the Bible? They can't tell you no or yes. They don't know. Without a prince. There's no prince running over there right now. Without a sacrifice. If they were to bring a sacrifice, where do they bring it? You got the dumb of the rock. There's no temple over there today. American Jews are not going over Jerusalem three times a year. As commanded by their law. Listen, without the Lord Jesus Christ, they're still under the law, but the temple has gone. The sacrifices are gone. The priests are gone. Hosea chapter 3. Why? Why is there no temple? Why is Israel scattered? Because they have committed adultery against Jehovah. And they murdered Jehovah. Acts 20:28. 20, and they said, let his blood be upon us and our children. We'll have no king but Caesar. Now who's running around over there right now? The Italian government. Without an image. What are they worshiping? They, they're true to, to no image worship. At least the Orthodox are. Without an ephah, where's the priest standing in Jerusalem today? Where is the high priest offering that showbread every Sabbath morning? Where is the priest Standing up and offering the lamb in the morning and the lamb at night. Without a teraphim. Again, there's their household image. That verse 4 is today. That's the church age. By rejecting their Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. Afterward, Hebrews 8, 10-12. Afterward, the future. 
shall the children of Israel return? Well, they went back in 1914. They went back in 1941. Read the next line. And seek the Lord, their God. Are they seeking God? Are they truly, really trying to get right with God? Well, they got the welling wall on that. Is it because the missiles are flying overhead? Or is it they're really seeking God? You mean they're really seeking God? I'm trying to think of the verse. I haven't been quoted in a long time. So, uh, None seek after me. It's in Romans. If they were really seeking God, you think God would close their eyes to them? After what we read at the end of chapter 2? Yeah. They are without mercy. God says, I will not be their God. Because they're not seeking him. They don't want to do right. They don't want to have anything to do with God. And where he read that there's coming a time where they're going to want to do right. They're going to want to do what God tells them to do. And at that point, God will receive them. That's repentance. But they're not seeking God today. And David, their king. Why is his name come up? He's been dead a long time. They're going to and are looking for David to come back. And he will return. See, he said, The children of Israel shall abide many days without a king, until the king of kings shows up. Without a prince. There's David's position in the millennium. You know the next political movement that's coming up won't be Republican or Democrat in Israel. It will be the Lord Jesus Christ sitting upon David's throne with David their prince. And shall fear the Lord. They're not fearing the Lord today. They don't even know who the Lord is. And his goodness in the latter days. The spiritual condition of Israel today and Judah is they're in whoredom and they're adulteries or adulteresses against their God. And their command, if they read Hosea 3, is to leave that adulterous relationship and return back to God and be faithful to God and do what you're supposed to do as a wife to God, as he is your husband, and he will return to you the vows of a husband to a wife. And until you do that, you're going to have no condition in your land. Now, the day that you get right and do right, and believe on the Lord Jesus Christ as a nation as he comes back at the second advent. Then you'll have your land. You'll have your king. You'll have your prince. You'll have your priest. There will be the temple. Then the sacrifices will return. Then the blessings will return upon the land. Then the milk and honey of the land will return. But while you're in adultery. While you are a whore, you ain't going to get that blessing. That's why God lays it out. And that allows for a spiritual condition of any Christian. You are in whoredoms against, against the Lord Jesus Christ, committing adultery against the Lord Jesus Christ by putting honor to any and anything and anyone else. You're going to have no blessings. You're going to get rebuke. You're going to get judgment. You're going to get chastised. And if you go too far, you can't lose your soul. But if you go too far, God just puts you on the shelf like he did with Israel. Now later on when the Lord Jesus Christ shows up, the rapture for the church, and you're judged, and get no crowns, and get no rewards, You'll be in a gracious and a mercy state with the Lord Jesus Christ for eternity. But you've wasted your whole life. Israel is wasting their life today. Dropping off into the pit of hell. And they are God's people. 
So you can commit physical and you can commit spiritual adultery. Both of them are abomination. 